go ahead and get started. So for those of you wondering why I'm stripping this wire with these pair of clines, um, yes I do have wire strippers, but I'm actually an electrician by trade, so I've been doing stuff like this for 13 or 14 years now. So um, I've kind of gotten used to uh, just knowing the amount of pressure I need without cutting any of the strands off. Um, the key is basically to not cut, but you want to you want to stretch that rubber off. So you just kind of indent it, and then you you want to stretch the rubber off, and uh, it'll snap right where you indented. Um, this also helps because what I do is I use this depth of my clines as the guide for how much I'm stripping off. So as you can see, that wire is right at the top of those clines. So that gives me the perfect amount so that I have enough to solder and also so that my shrink wrap fits. So when you solder, and I mean by no means am I considering myself an expert. <clears throat> but when I solder, what I do is, uh, as you can see, my tip is pretty nasty, but this little curve actually makes a perfect spot to sit your wire right in. So what I'll do is I'll sit my wire in there, and then I'll dab some solder on the tip so that it makes good contact with the wire. When the wire starts to heat, because what you really want to do is you want to be tapping the solder onto the wires, not the iron. And it should be hot enough to flow, which means it's going to fill all the gaps between the wire. So what I do is I stick my wire in there, I dab some on the tip, wait until it starts. I see it start to flow, and then I dab it on all the other spots in the wire. What's very important is, and probably the most important part when soldering, is when you are done soldering your connection, you want to let it sit for at least 10 seconds or so before you move it because the solder needs to completely cool before you start moving it or else you'll cause hairline fractures which could cause an issue down the road. Um, a lot of people think that butt splices are better and soldering is not the best option. Um, there's definitely a lot of evidence that suggests that but I've always soldered. Um, I completely made the wiring harness in the 240 and I soldered every single connection and I've never had a problem. Um, as long as you solder and shrink wrap and make sure your connections are solid and that everything flowed, you should be good to go.
comes another ricer that speeds through my neighborhood all the time. It's either going to be a black facade or a golf. I'm sure you can hear the shitty ricer exhaust from there. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to finish up this wiring harness and then we'll go ahead and wrap all of these down to where we can. And uh, wrap some of the other old connectors. Rewrap some of the old connectors. And uh, go from there. All right, so this is what we got going on already. Um, we finished this wiring harness down here uh, the other day. Uh, I'm not sure if that got cut off or not. We've also finished this whole wiring harness down here. So we trailed this all the way back. We retaped some of this stuff. Uh, we also retaped all this down here. So. Now we're going to go ahead and get these fuel injectors done, which by the way, we had, um, there's, so here's one that you can see the wire was either not attached or pulled out of it. And here's the second one that the wire was detached or pulled out of. So at least two of them were not right. Um, Butt splices are okay for some stuff. I don't prefer, I don't, I don't really like butt splices. I don't think they're a great connection method. So um, I solder all my connections and shrink wrap them. So that's what we'll be doing here today. So here's the new connectors versus the old ones. Um, these were the old ones, so obviously they are new style. But you can see this top's a little bit beefier, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I just checked them on my existing fuel injectors, which uh, are the new style, just to make sure they all fit right. and Everything seems to fit right, so.
All right, so here's the finished wiring harness. As you can see, not the uh, neatest thing, but you know, it's gonna do good, way better than it was before. And obviously all this stuff is heat resistant and everything like that. Got all of our new uh, coil packs, all of our new fuel injector plugs. Uh, taped all that all the way down as far as I could. Got that one done, obviously. And uh, that's about it for now with the wiring. See y'all next time.